Welcome back! Today on Dialed In DIY, we're making a personal portable pocket fan out of an Altoids tin. And the best part? We're getting a 12 volt fan to run off of 5 volts out of USB. Today I'm recycling or repurposing just about every part I need in this project except for one piece. And you can find a lot more details about all of these in the description below. In a recent video, linked in the description below, I used a handy dandy little device called a step up converter to get more volts out of batteries. We're going to do the same thing today to get more volts out of our USB. For testing purposes on this project, I salvaged an old USB cable so that I could use the red and black wires to get the power and connect everything up and test it out before I make all of my connections permanent. This also affords me the great opportunity to dial down that converter to the volts that we need. I want to give a special thanks to Nicole and Paul who donated an old PC that had some wonderful parts in it, like this hard drive that had a heat sink with two fans built into it. I only need one of these fans, so I'm going to go ahead and separate it from its heat sink and do a little bit of a quick cleanup. Any kind of a fan that's used on the inside of a computer for enough time is going to get pretty dirty and I want that cleaned up before I use this as my own little personal cooling fan. A uh, quick look at the bottom of the fan did prove that this is indeed a 12 volt fan, so I do need to make some adjustments because USB carries 5 volts. That's why that step up converter is going to be needed. So that brings us to step 3 of this particular project, where we're going to go ahead and connect the fan to an unaltered USB power so we can test everything out connected, you can see that the 5 volts really doesn't cut it, so we do have to use that step up converter. I'm going to go ahead and hook that up now and retest our connections and make sure the fan works. If you want more information on this particular step up converter or any others or just some information about using them, check out the information in the video linked in the description below. I give a lot more background and detail about hooking them up, using them, and where you can find them. Now that we have everything hooked up and running, the fan looks great, and a double check on the multimeter, and we are indeed pulling 12 volts. So this is perfect, and this takes us to step 4, showing how we're going to complete all of our wiring. For my power input on this project, I'm going to take an old flash drive that is now useless because it has such a small memory capacity. I'm going to cut it in half and use the outside pins to connect wires so I can get my positive and negative leads for my power source. This step up converter came with preset holes clearly marked for where the power goes in and where the power comes out. So I'm going to put the wires through there, twist them up and add a little bit of solder to make everything really secure. I'm going to go ahead and take that wire that I put on the negative in port of the converter and run that to the negative port on my USB flash drive. I'm also going to take a smaller section of loose wire and connect that to the positive pin on the USB flash drive also. A quick test of all the wiring shows that everything is working exactly like I want it to do, so I am ready to move forward with this project. Now we're ready to grab the Altoids tin and the fan, check our fit, and start taking some measurements. I want to find the distance down to the midpoint on the fan and then transfer that mark onto the back of the tin. I want to put this fan towards the top of one end just to make it the most convenient for the rest of the parts to fit inside. You'll note that I'm using a simple round push button switch. I'm going to put that on the hinge side opposite of the fan and opposite of that, I'm going to make a space for putting in the USB thumb drive. One of the things that I do when I'm making these kind of measurements is double check by actually lining up the parts with the locations where I think they're going to go and making sure that it appears that everything is going to fit together once I have everything cut. With this done, I do transfer these measurements to the outside and begin making my holes and cuts. I do love using these graduated drill bits which step up like a little bit of a cone shape. It's perfect for making holes just a little bit bigger, testing the fit, and making a little bit bigger again. If you don't happen to have one of these, just grab yourself a set of drill bits and keep making bigger holes until you get it to the size you need. I grabbed my Dremel and an old cutoff wheel that had already been worn down to a much smaller size, which made it perfect for cutting this rectangle to put the USB through. This will have some pretty sharp edges and corners, so you want to make sure to grind and sand all of those down till they're smooth so you don't get yourself or anything else catching up on those and getting cut. If the main hole in the back of your fan port wasn't big enough, go ahead and grab another Dremel bit and route it out a little bit more. 
For some extra security, I am wrapping all of the exposed wire connections on the thumb drive with electrical tape. This is also going to help to make sure that everything fits and doesn't slide too far through our notch that we cut in the side of the tin. As an optional step in this build, I've got an old piece of wire mesh that I'm going to use, once I've cut it down to size, to cover the inside of the hole that the fan's going to blow through. This will help to make sure that no one sticks a finger into the fan blade when it's moving and just give a little extra security to my finished project. In a project like this, Gorilla Tape or Duct Tape comes in extremely handy. I'm going to use a couple of thin strips to hold the mesh in place and then move on to the rest of the inside of the tin and cover that as well. Covering these inside surfaces will help to protect the components from jostling around and vibrations, but also it'll help to reduce the likelihood of accidental electrical short circuits. For this next step, you can try just about any kind of double-sided stick tape, but I'm actually using mounting tape that's double-sided because it is perfect for adding our fan into our tin. I'm making sure that the fan blows through the back of the tin, and then I'm going to go ahead and take the thumb drive and push it through the hole from the inside. I'm going to then take the round push button switch and screw it in from the outside on the hinge side of the tin, and then I'm going to move on to sliding in that converter between those two pieces and we'll be set. The only thing that's left to do to make our fan operational is hook up the remaining two free wires to the switch. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of solder and make everything set so that it won't come apart. To go ahead and test out my fan, I'm going to take this extension USB cable and go ahead and plug it into the side. The other end is connected to a wall wart and on off switch works, fan works. It's a success. I like the way it works. Now we just need to clean it up a little bit. As I mentioned previously, I did solder the wires to the switch, but once this was done, I noticed that my little thumb drive could move back and forth a little bit, so I took a couple pieces of PVC, cut them to the distance between the switch and the thumb drive, and laid them in sideways to keep everything secure. With this done, I now have a compact pocket fan that's very effective, it is compact, I have on-off control, it's portable, and best of all, I have the convenience of using a 12-volt fan on a lot of different available USB 5-volt power sources. An optional cleanup step, I took a little piece of plastic and covered the components, because as you can see when I operate the fan, I set it on its end and just open the door a little bit to use like a leg to keep everything standing upright. There are a lot of options now for powering up this cool little fan, and it makes it extremely convenient for me to take anywhere I want to go. I can use it at the desk, at the computer, in the car, or with a little power pack, anywhere I want a little bit of a breeze. Yeah, this turned out better than I expected. Do you have any cool suggestions on how I could use a little fan like this? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for stopping by Dialed and DIY and taking the time to watch my video. If you liked it, I'd love for you to let me know by clicking that little thumbs up button down there. And if you have the opportunity while you're here, go ahead and subscribe and come back and check out future Dialed and DIY videos. Want to see some more videos like this? Take a look through my playlists and make sure to come on back because there's going to be plenty more Dialed and DIY to come.